we will get into the pod uh, shortly, but as always with our guests, we want to go through our clubhouse questions. So I think to kick us off, Tyler, I'm going to send it to you to, uh, to give Tom the first question. Okay. I love it. Great. Yeah. This is one of my favorite new segments we do because it's now that we're having some guests and guests that we don't know already. Uh, it's really cool to get to know everyone. Um, we just learned where you live, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> so let's keep it going. Um, if you've been listening to the pod and it sounds like you have a little bit, uh, I typically ask everyone um, who the person was in their life or whatever influence in their life had the biggest uh, impact on their tastes in movies. Um, and so I'll open that up to you. But I also want to know, um, I've been starved for uh, actual in theater experience or like the magic of the movies outside of my home. Yes. And so I'm curious if you have a specific moment or whatever, whether it's in a theater or not. Uh, that you remember your favorite movie memory if you've got so um, you can answer either one of those questions or both and I'll accept humbly (laughs) I'll answer neither no (laughs) fair enough next question (laughs) (laughs) so my the the two biggest influences on me first of all my father Um, my my mother is also a film nerd but she keeps it to herself Mm -hmm. Uh, you know she's she's really private about it my father is a photographer and was at one point training to be a cinematographer, but he stayed in, in kind of studio photography. And he used to tape HBO movies on the, you know, on, on VHS. Oh. Yeah. So that was my kind of introduction to actual serious movies was Rad. The, these collections of like, you know, The Godfather and, and Aliens. For some reason, Aliens was like a big formative <laughs> film for me. That's cool. Um, yeah. And then my, my other influence was um, this, this professor up at the College of the Holy Cross, uh, Steve Weinberg, who taught uh, film and theater. He directed me in two plays, and he's just an excellent film critic. He, he's a critic over at Critics at Large, a, a website that uh, does a bunch of reviews of different media. And he was also uh, studied or was mentored by Pauline Kael, if anybody knows her. Mm-hmm. She's the the film critic at the New Yorker for years and years, mm. and oh, okay. I would say like Steve and Pauline Kael have um yeah she was at the New Yorker from like late sixties to I want to say ninety one I think yeah okay. I think it was ninety one um, yeah yeah and uh, they together really kind of shaped um shaped and kind of disciplined the way I consume pop culture not sure. that consuming pop culture has to be this like discipline <laughs> act um, sure. but you do want to be <laughs> yes it does <laughs> yeah. it's serious business yeah but it's serious goddamn <laughs> business um, but you know you, you, pop culture does like it's it's really interesting and it generates ideas it's not like stupid at all and you want to you want to come to it with a, a sort of critical intelligence and that's what i've learned from from steve Red. that's awesome that's oh, that's cool film man. experience right oh yeah 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 oh, sorry go for it well just i was gonna note that um my grandfather who was my big influence for me growing up or one of the largest anyways uh he also used to tape stuff on hbo and give me the cassettes and i remember uh the original batman with tim burton uh, he let me hand draw or mm-hmm. handwrite the label and i wrote batman and robin even nice. though robin's nowhere to be seen in that movie but that was my yeah. memory of batman mm-hmm. was that batman and robin were a tandem yeah. so i whenever i think of that original batman i think of that handwritten label batman and robin that i wore out in my vcr that's, <laughs> that's and if cool anybody memory. puts that movie on they'll be pleasantly surprised because they won't see the joel schumacher batman and robin <laughs> 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 right, film. right. Yeah. so if it's anybody nice... owns a vcr you've done them a, a solid <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> I was going to find that tape. Yeah. And it's my, my, I think my best film experience, even though I, I is, is this time when I was a kid and we went to this really nice theater in Manhattan and I don't even remember the theater to watch the sound of music. Mm. I have since seen the sound of music and do not like the sound of music. <laughs> <very much. laughs> uh, I'm like one of the few people on earth who doesn't like Julie Andrews. It's like, nice. I, it's like me and some psychopath somewhere. We're, we're <laughs> a, a two person club who doesn't like Julie Andrews. But I, as a kid, it was a, a really great experience because there's, you know, there's the kind of overture that starts it. There is a break where you in the middle of the, the acts where you get up and get something to eat. And the, it, it replicated this kind of old school film experience that has since been lost. And it's kind of being replaced by the IMAX experience, the kind of 
a maximum yeah. sound, maximum comfort, which is is great. I, you know, I, I right. like that experience as well. Um, but this this older experience is worth uh, doting on, even though it's it might actually come back thanks to COVID. You might need a theater like that in order to yeah. attract an audience. Um, but that is probably my most uh, fond movie going uh, memory. That's awesome, and it mm -hmm. it it uh. It brings an idea to my head about that I've been having about the effects that COVID's going to have long term and how it's been devastating to the movie industry as as a whole, both uh, as a both from the experience, like the person watching the movies and the people making the movies. Yeah. Um, but I do think you're right that it's it's sort of shining a light on the fact that we need those places to go and gather and be around other people because. You know, my favorite movie experiences have all been in the theaters with other people. Uh, the most recent one I can think of was in um, uh, the Avengers uh, Endgame mm. when, you know, when Cap picks up the hammer yeah. and the whole place just went ballistic. And it was like this pure joy. And it was it wasn't annoying to me. I was I was <laughs> in on it. I was fist pumping and it was it was a beautiful moment in a, you know, to talk about uh, the way that pop culture can influence a life. Um, you know, that was, that's a perfect example of all that. And it's something we've lost over the last year. And I do think you're right. I think it's going to influence where movies and the way we experience them goes heading forward. Yeah. It's, there's going to have to be a shtick for a theater. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's going to have to be like serving food or this has extra super right. sound or, you know, I think the 3d thing is over with, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is strange like, you yeah. say that because, uh, Alamo draft house, didn't they just declare bankruptcy and that they're oh, like they? the, they're like the kingpins of that. Oh, I think they did right. in a few places. Um, mm. I think more or less they're getting bought out. So they'll still kind of exist, but yeah, whatever mm. they're, whatever was happening wasn't working, but um, mm. hopefully, you know, again, I'm, I'm with you guys a hundred percent that like once things can start to get back to normal, we can get in you know public without too much concern. I, I just, all I want is Alamo draft houses. Like I just want places <laughs> yeah. where like you it's can't perfect. have your phone out. You can't talk during it. Like I, I want people kicked out if they're, if they're bothering me, you know, like <laughs> yeah. and I, I'm happy to pay 20, 30 bucks to go. If it means I can just sit there and enjoy it the way it's meant to be enjoyed without right. worrying about other people talking or on their phone or anything like that. So, and you yeah. can sit comfortably, you know, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you get good food and good beer if that's your thing. So yeah, I'm excited to see where things go from here. Cause mm -hmm. The, the closest theater to my house here in Portland is not a nice or comfortable place to go. I mean, it's clean and everything, but it's like the seats are about 40 years old. And yeah, you know what I mean? It just sucks to go there. So I have to drive super far. I mean, very first world problem here, but it is <laughs> it is an issue in a life with someone who likes to go to movies. So anyways, um, I think that's a beautiful answer. And uh, I now I want to watch you. The Sound of Music again. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time, don't, so don't. Ma oh, maybe I, I hate Julie Andrews too. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you, you should just join the team, man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, nobody likes us, but we have each other. <laughs> sure. All right. There are dozens of us. Oh, stop booing. There's nothing wrong with it. There are dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> there are yeah. dozens of us. I remember I went to the uh, I went to a taping of the Ellen Show for like her Christmas you know giveaway days, and one of the guests was Julie Andrews. Mm -hmm. And we got a free copy of the Blu-ray of Sound of Music. I was like, man, this sucks. Like, I wish it was like Mary Poppins or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's like, I don't want to watch Sound of Music. Like, thank you for the free thing and yeah. whatever. I'm like, this is so weird. And the other thing, the other guest was like this six-year-old kid who just knew every single like vacuum company. And so we got like a free vacuum and stuff. I was like, what a weird episode to like be here for the taping of the know, hills are alive strange. with shitty guest prices. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah somebody oh. canceled and so they had to pull this kid on <laughs> yeah exactly like you know what hoover is yeah okay um <laughs> anyways um i will move on to my question um which you know you said you listen to these episodes so you know what's coming up or for those who possibly haven't one thing i love talking to people about is who their favorite director and or actor is so i always like to pose the question of a desert island director or actor so you're on an island you have electricity and a tv for some reason and you can have the <laughs> entire filmography of one person uh, dead or alive, you can have everything they've done. If they're still alive, you'll get copies of whatever they do. Um, but I always like to hear who people would choose as their uh, desert island director or actor. So whose would yours be? All right. So I'm going to go with the pompous answer because a little pomposity never hurt anyone. Love maybe. It. Uh, and, and that's I'm going to go with Laurence Olivier. And nice. I can justify this. Yeah. So you get Laurence Olivier, you get um, 
some like great Shakespeare on films. So you get Henry V, mm-hmm. you get Richard III, you get the Oscar winning Hamlet, you get Othello, you get some good Chekhov. So he did uh, a television film, and I know it's television, but it's a film, so it counts. Of, <laughs> I'll um, let you take it. Uh, Uncle Vanya, and then he also directed Three Sisters. Uh, you mm. get Rebecca, the, the, I think the only Oscar winning Hitchcock film, if I'm not mistaken. Which is a great movie. A great movie, yeah. Wuthering Heights. A great, great movie where he's playing Heathcliff there. Uh, what else? Oh, you get Marathon Man. Marathon Man, where Dustin mm. Hoffman decides to go full method. And in yeah. contrast, Olivier plays a geriatric Nazi dentist who <laughs> is in search of diamonds and has a retractable blade in his in his coat because Correct. he wasn't doing this method shit because he's a geriatric Nazi <laughs> diamond hunting <laughs> dentist. Yeah. And so you get that. Uh, the boys from Brazil. Um, yeah, just a, a tremendous amount of, of good work, both performed and, and directed, um, ranging from like this great pop stuff to some really good Shakespeare and Chekhov. That's awesome. That's some great. Is, is Marathon Man the story of, I, I, I don't remember if it's them or not, where Dustin Hoffman, you know, going method and just like staying up, going crazy, whatever, mm-hmm. just like get into the scene and Olivia's like, have you tried acting? Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. putting yourself through this? Have you just tried being an actor like is that is that from this movie i feel like it it is yeah yeah that's because i think i think they got it on tape now Lawrence olivier in his older years he made a film called marathon man and he showed up one day and there's there's dustin dustin is the quintessential american actor but also the new york kind of ethnic actor and he just looks ghastly and you know and so Lawrence looks at me i'm like my dear boy my god what happened to you i feel so bad for you and Dustin goes, well, you know, I haven't slept for four days and I didn't change my clothes and I didn't take a shower. He goes, I said, well, why, why, why not? Well, it's the part. That's, I have to live the part. And Olivier steps back and looks at him and says, my dear boy, why don't you try acting? It's so much easier. It's like, have you tried acting? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just going full yeah. method. It's like, man, what yeah. are you doing? This is crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's not even my favorite movie, but it's, it's just, you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great choice. Like, yeah, I recently watched Rebecca for the first time and I was just blown away. And I mean, again, just, I mean, we'll be covering Hitchcock here coming up, but just watching the behind the scenes of that and how they put that all together and the sets and everything like that is such a fantastic movie. I haven't checked out the remake. I don't know that I want to, but uh, yeah, I think Rebecca is wonderful. It's always great when you have some Hitchcock with you on that desert Island. So awesome. Mm -hmm. Olivia, I like it. I, uh, that answer is such a perfect representation of why we wanted to do this club that turned into a podcast. Cause I don't know if I've seen a single Lawrence Olivier film and I've, I mean, I know who he is and like, Mm -hmm. I've heard that anecdote about the, have you tried acting thing? And Mm -hmm. I understand his influence, but I can't say that I've ever seen a single one of his films and I may have, I just don't remember it, but it's exactly why I wanted to do a podcast like this. And it's exactly why we wanted to ask questions like this because now I'm like, Hmm, they have a little work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Do, do Rebecca, do Wuthering Heights. Okay. I mean, Wuthering Heights is like a really excellent film, except for the last five seconds. They, they, they <laughs> hired an extra. <laughs> Spoiler hired, alert. Yeah. So I'm not going to say what happens, but they hired another director to tag on an end. The producers did. Oh, and wow, they didn't wow. tell anybody about it until it premiered. And so they're like, what the? What, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine being there mm-hmm. watching that. Yeah. It's like, wait, this mm-hmm. isn't my ending. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And. I mean, Bananas. another reason I love these answers is like, I think the last person we asked, uh, their person was Ryan Gosling, which is great. Ryan Gosling would also be an awesome desert Island, but I just love going from mm. Gosling to Olivier, you know, like how often yes. do you hear about mm-hmm. them in the same kind of context? <laughs> so I think that's, that's perfect. I love I these questions for that reason. Gosling is hams- uh, has, is more handsome. I will admit that. <laughs> sure. It'd be easier on the eyes while you're on a yeah, desert Yeah, he'd be easier on sure. the eyes. Maybe yeah. that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck a little bit on the, director finishing the last five minutes of the movies was the director <laughs> looks like his name was william wyler i don't know anything yeah. about him was mm-hmm. he a big director in his time oh yeah 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 he so was, like, I with, came over from germany i think i i guess it's like if like chris nolan came out with the what let's say tenant and they've asked like I don't know, Ryan Coogler to tack on five minutes at the end. Like, is that like, I'm just, I can't yeah, even imagine something like that happening. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not, it's not five minutes. It's five seconds. It's like one oh, okay. shot, but it's, oh, okay. I, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's really stupid. And so the last thing you, the last taste you have in your mouth is sour. That's right? it. It's a great movie. And it's like, what? 
what what is that <laughs> who was the director was it just like a hired hand for the studio or yeah, was it i have anyone? no idea okay, yeah, yeah i don't know i mean it's it's you have this kind of um i think weiler came from germany and had a lot of experience there and then he mm-hmm. comes into the studio system which is a is a different beast yeah <laughs> and Weiler, he, he did like uh ben hur and Roman Holiday, so he did, oh, he did like a okay. lot of big stuff. So that, yeah, that is yeah, it is gotcha. like taking over from Nolan, but it sounds like it's giving it to just some kid fresh out of college to just do the last five seconds. Not even someone <laughs> at, of, of note as Ryan Coogler or somebody that you know you have some trust in. So wow, cool, weird. The All times right, have changed. I know, right? <laughs> so several rounds ago, we did a round called Unsung Gems. It was Ben's idea, essentially. We knew that everybody has a movie or a few movies that, for whatever reason, goes underappreciated or unrecognized um, with our peers. And they they tend to be a movie that we love that just no one's either seen or no one really appreciates. And so my question for everybody who comes on our show is, what is your unsung gem? Funny you should ask, because I have it (laughs) right here. Oh, it is. uh, Yes. (laughs) Last Orders by Fred Skepsi is the is the director. Um, You know him. He did uh, Roxanne, if anybody knows. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He did Roxanne. He did one of the best um, adaptations of a play, Six Degrees of Separation with uh, uh, Civil Shepherd and um, uh, sorry. uh, um, What's her name? Channing. I don't remember her name. Anyway, uh, Will Smith. We'll just say Will Smith. Okay. Uh, Smith. <laughs> and yeah, then he did this in 2001 um, with based on a, a book by Graham Swift, which itself is based on uh, F- William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying, mm. which is basically a grotesque funeral procession. <laughs> um, mm. This movie, however, is not grotesque at all, even though there is a kind of a, a funeral aspect to it. As Michael Caine, um, David Hemmings from... Uh, blow up if anybody's ever seen that oh, um yeah but also yeah yeah this is this is the next movie he did uh nice, <laughs> yeah. Duran, uh bob hoskins is wonderful in it and ray winston oh, awesome. from the Depart- you know from the departed and it's a great great movie about uh basically michael Caine has died and they're they're taking his ashes to a seaside town to, to let mm. them go and it's these four guys his son and his three friends who are doing it and it's intercut with the story of his wife played by Helen Moran and um and then also um Helen Moran as as a younger person when they were first meeting okay uh, played by Kelly Riley of all people uh, one of her first roles and then you know it's it's their various stories at different times in their life and it's kind of weaved together and it's not overly sad it's not overly happy but it's just very very rich with sympathy Characters mm. do things that, if I were to describe them, sound um, either unethical or or cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but within the context of the film, everything is everything feels explained. And even if it mm. isn't the action you would do, you would understand and have sympathy and even love for the people when they they encounter these things in their lives that they might deal with in in let's say upsetting ways. Yeah. So it's, it's a great movie. No one has seen it. <laughs> I have yeah. the only DVD. They only sold yeah. one. That's, yeah. that's right here. Maybe um, just for you. Just for me, yeah. Um, but I would definitely, I definitely recommend that. And also, Fred Skepsi is a great, great director. So check out Six Degrees. Check out Roxanne. Um, yeah, wonderful director. Rad. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I saw, I pulled up the IMDb when you had mentioned that. And the minute I saw Bob Hoskins, my love for Hook kicked in. I was like, well, I've got to check this out because oh. I'm on board for anything Bob Hoskins is doing. That's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's more the star than Michael Caine, I think. He's mm-hmm. more of the focus. He's the heart of the film. Oh, the cool. The film kind of revolves around him, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, putting up with our questions. Um, <laughs> it's so great. I, again, like we've all mentioned it, but I think this is one of the favorite things that we do because we get to know people just a little bit better before we kick into the episode you know, a little bit more understanding of, you know, your history with movies and your, your taste and things like that. So thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's a great bit of the show. I, I was looking forward to doing this. All right. Um, yeah. I appreciate that. 